class while I was making a recording. I took a phone call from the Terminex people. That was fun. So that's going to be an interesting little tidbit for whoever wants to watch that video. What? Let's what? just hope we let's just hope you get a phone call during this video. I shouldn't. You, they, you know, sometimes if you call like a customer service line, they're like, it's a really long line. Leave your number. We'll call you back. So I did that, and they said they're only going to try once. So I had to make sure I got the call. So. What was it for? What's Terminex? Terminex is like a pest control where they like spray outside your house to make sure you don't get all sorts of weird bugs and, and wasps really and things. Everything. And I wanted to make sure it was okay for our puppy. It's fine for our puppy. Yeah, we use Terminex a lot. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Okay. So here we go. They gave us the example that if one of Harold's friends started out at 60 inches tall and the potion had the scale factor of one half, they multiplied 60 times one half. Now the person is 30 inches, so clearly they shrunk. So we're going to do that same procedure, noticing that we are multiplying by the scale factor. So if someone is 64 inches tall, the potion says three. 64 times 3, we're going to get 192. Where did you get 64? Because no. that's the one they gave us. Where? Is it 192? Oh. 64 times 3. Yeah, 192. And clearly that person grew in size. Right? Okay, 56 inches tall, potion is 1 8. So the way you multiply times 1 8 is you do 56 times 1, and then you divide by the, the denominator 8. So you get 7, right? I know you can just divide by 8, but some of our fractions are going to have numerators in them, so we need a strategy for multiplying by the numerator, divide by the denominator. I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and do like one, like the numerator divided by the denominator, and then times that by the mm -hmm. original number that we're going to do. Yeah. That's what I always do. So, um, Tiffany, since my fraction is 1 8, I did 56 times the 1, and then I divided by the denominator 8, and I got 7. So clearly that person is a lot smaller than they were. Just take in how small 7 inches is. Pretty small. Okay, this person's 58 inches, so we're going to do 58 times 2.5, and you should get 145, so they were grown. There are 60 inches times 0 0.4. They're going to now be 24 inches. That was a shrink. Then I've got 62 inches, so I'm going to do 62 times 3, and I get 186. And then take that divided by 2, and I get 93 inches. Okay, so let's go ahead and analyze what happened here. Obviously, we're multiplying by our scale factor to get a new value, and then we decided if they were growing or shrinking. Describe in your own words how you can calculated the new height after each potion. So what did we do here? What was our process? Starting height times potion scale factor. Yep, multiply original times scale factor. That was our process. Okay. 
List the scale factors that caused Harold and his friends to grow. So what were the scale factors and then the, when they ended up that the, that the person actually grew in height? What scale factor? 2.5 and 3. And 3 over 2. What do we notice about these? They are all greater than 1. I'm going to write out the word 1. Even though 3 over 2 is a fraction, it's an improper fraction, right? So that means it's going to be a value bigger than 1. How about the scale factors that cause them to shrink? 0.4, 1, 8. 1 half, right? And they are, you're close. They're less than one, but we need to be a little bit more specific. They are all between zero and one. So yes, fractions and decimals. What if somebody drank a potion with a scale factor of 1? Yep, they're going to stay the same size. Mm -hmm. They probably would think, oh, this is going to be really cool because it's exactly 1, and then they'd be super disappointed because it didn't change. All right. Okay, turn the page. We're going to do some more fill in the blanks. Scale factor is a ratio of the corresponding sides of a figure. So we have the new divided by the original, or you could say image divided by pre-image, right? So that would be like A prime divided by A could be another example. If the scale factor is greater, then one, it will enlarge the figure. If the scale factor is smaller. smaller than one, and again, we're talking about those fractions and decimals, it will reduce the figure. A dilation is a transformation that either enlarges or reduces the size of an original figure. To dilate the figure, we multiply by the scale factor. Okay, ready to put it into action? It's going to be great, Mrs. Marsh, thanks. Okay, so we want to dilate this by a scale factor of two-fifths. So right away you should know that this is going to be what? A reduction or an enlargement? Reduction. So write reduction in here. That should tell you that our numbers should get smaller, right? So when I was talking about how to do two-fifths times a number, we're going to do 35 times 2, and we get 70. And then you take the 70 divided by 5, and you get 14. So our fraction is 2 fifths. So first we multiplied this side length by 2, and then we divided it by 5. 15 times 2 equals 30. 30 divided by 5 equals 6. So our new dimensions are 14 inches and six inches. All right, question six, scale factor 3.5, enlargement or reduction? Enlargement. enlargement. It has a decimal, but it also has a whole number in front of the decimal. So that should tell you it's going to get greater.
This one's pretty easy because we just multiply by the 3.5. So we get 77 and 35 for our values. Okay, number seven. My scale factor is 5 thirds, enlargement or reduction? Enlargement. It is an enlargement. Why is it not a reduction? It's definitely greater than one because we have an improper fraction. Yep. One and two thirds. Yep. So this is an enlargement. So I'm going to do 30 times 5, and then the 150 divided by 3. So because this is just a decimal value, um, we can just multiply times the decimal. Um, if this had been given to us as 0. 0.4, this two-fifths over here, we could have multiplied it by just... Would you just, like, change it? Well, so this is thirds, and thirds are not exact values, right? So we definitely need to stick to the um, fraction here. Yeah, and it's hard to show that. And remember, you'll be able to use your calculator. So you would just do 30 times 5 equals and then divide that by whatever. What is our test over all these It's going to be a while because we have I learned the next couple weeks, and I'm not going to be giving you guys anything else, like any other tests. So. Okay, these are slightly different because we don't have... Um, the scale factor. We're trying to find a scale factor here. So we're going to use this up here where it's new divided by original. So we're going to down here for number eight. I'm going to pick two corresponding sides. So I'm going to use the eight, the g to the h, and the g prime to the h prime. You have to use the exact same sides of the triangle. So my new value. is 10 and my original value was the 8 centimeters. Right? This is my pre-image and my image here. And this can be simplified to what, McCoy? Um. Five over four. So my scale factor is five over four. And then what, what, you have to choose that side. You just have to do one side because it, we know it's a dilated figure, so that right that scale factor is going to apply to all three sides. But I can't do like g to h and g to i. I have to make sure that they are okay. the same side of the figure. Landon. Okay, here we go. We have two rectangles. I only have one option to use because I only know for sure that two of those line segments are in the same position. So I've got my new divided by my original. So which, which line segment am I going to use? 18 and 12. 18 and 12, good job. So my new is 12, and my original is 18. Right, you gotta pay attention to those apostrophes. Hunter, what does 12 over 18 simplify to? Um, 12 yep, and then that can simplify again. Six, 
two thirds. Yep, two six can go into both of these two thirds. So it's two thirds. But if you had six over nine, three can go into both of those, and you still get two thirds, right? So we knew it was going to be a fraction. This one is a fraction, but remember it's improper, so that's how we know it's enlarging. All right, skip the next page for now. Let's go on to dilations on the coordinate plane. Okay, so this is a little bit different because we don't have side length. All we have are ordered pairs. So we're going to take what we've been doing for the side lengths and we're going to apply them to the ordered pairs. So it says dilate each of the figures by the given scale factor, then record the coordinates of the image and do an algebraic expression. We got this. So scale factor 1.5, is that going to be an enlargement or a reduction? Enlargement because it's greater than one. And then what we need to do is first identify our pre-image coordinates. We can't do anything until we know what those pre-image values are. So go ahead and find the ordered pairs for A, B, and C on that triangle. Lots of fours and twos. And then I'm going to use my calculator and I'm going to multiply each of those values by 1.5. And that's going to give me my new ordered pairs. So what's negative 4 times 1.5? Negative 6. What's negative 2 times 1.5? Negative 3. Right? So I'm taking each coordinate and I'm multiplying it by the scale factor to get my new ordered pairs. This is going to be negative 3, 6. And this is going to be 6, negative 3. And I know that just because all I have is 2s and 4s. So I already know the new value. Now I'm going to actually plot those. So negative 6, negative 3 gives me A prime. Negative 3, 6 gives me B prime. And 6, negative 3 gives me C prime. And I can connect those and make myself an enlarged by 1.5 triangle. Ta-da! Who's excited? We're doing dilations. Not terrible, right? Okay. Um, let's do number two together. Scale factor is 2, so what is, what is this going to be? Enlargement. I'm going to write out my pre-image ordered pairs again. Notice that they have going by 1s for the x-axis and by 3s for the y-axis. So pay really close attention to your ordered pair increments. And then this is easy. I just multiply by 2. I can multiply things by 2, right? 6, 6, 6, 30, and 10, 6. And then be careful when you're plotting. Make sure you're paying attention to the increments.
Okay, we definitely forgot to do the algebraic representation for these. So I'm just going to tell you the algebraic representation. We start out with our original x, y. What did we multiply every value by? So it's going to be 1.5x, 1.5y. That's how you got the new ordered pairs. We multiplied them by 1.5. What do you think the algebraic representation will be for number 2? 2x, 2y. Great job. All right, last one, number 3, and then I'll leave you alone. Reduction or enlargement? Reduction. Reduction. We've got A, B, and C. Pay really close attention to those increments again. How am I going to get A prime, B prime, and C prime? Everything needs to get multiplied by 0.75. So we've got 3, 6, 9, 12, and then 12, 6. We have to save some time here, so I'm just going to give you those. We've got a slightly smaller triangle. And then my algebraic representation, xy, turns into 0.75x, 0.75y. You guys are now dilation experts. Nice work.